Hello everyone, welcome back to our course on computer vision. I am Kausal Tripathi, your instructor and today we are going to talk about thresholding. So thresholding is a very, uh, you could say, important concept in the uh, image pre-processing and because with, this help, with the help of this concept, you can find the hidden features inside of an images. You can, basically what thresholding does is, it separates the background with the foreground, with, you know, you wanna if you wanna uh, extract something, some object from the image, you wanna remove the background and you wanna extract that object. So this kind of all these things are done with the help of thresholding. So like if something is hidden with uh, uh, in a major because of its colors and all, and you uh, couldn't able to emphasize or you couldn't able to see it. But with the help of thresholding, you can differentiate that object with the whatever the color that is hiding it or the background that is hiding it. So basically we call thresholding as to separate background from the objects that we want to work with. So now there are lots of methods in the thresholding. Okay, let's get on to a spider ID and see what those methods are. Okay, so here we are. Now this is a normal general program. Importing Lena, uh, Lena image and just showing the image, whatever that image is, and uh, using wait key and destroy all windows, you see this is a Lena image. Okay, so now there are lots of methods in thresholding. Basically, like uh, um, sorry, um, thresh binary. Um, then there is thresh binary inverse, then there is a, you know, trunk, then 2, 0, and 2, 0 inverse. Now these are some general or uh, you can say simple thresholding methods. I would say there are lots of better adaptive thresholding methods that I will explain later on the course. But uh, in this video, we will talk about these general thresholding methods and we will understand what really thresholding is. So let's remove these and let's apply them over here in our the program. So uh, as you can see, I have imported this image in the program. Now I'm gonna you uh, you know, but one thing we need to understand is. Thresholding applies, uh, you know, if you want to really work with a thresholding, you need to work in the, you know, black and white image, or you can call it a single scaling image. Because a single channel image, sorry. Because in the color image, I will show you the problem that you're going to face with a color image and the uh, uh, when you work with a black and white image. There is a kind of a difference and you would feel comfortable with working with the black and white images in comparison to the colored images. So I will show you in the both ways. You will see it, check, uh, find out what, what are the problems that we will face and do whatever the better option you like. I would prefer black and white. If you prefer colored image, working on colored images, you can. It's your choice. Okay. So, and let's, uh, uh, let's create a, you know, make a black and white of it. So I will do image one is equal to cv2 dot cvd color. And uh, here we're gonna give it two variables. Argument, sorry, image one, the source image, and uh, the method, the code that we are going to apply. That is cv2 dot color bgr to gray. Okay, right now our image is in bgr color, and we wanna convert it into a grayscale, so bgr to gray. So if I run it right now, I'll see our image becomes a grayscale image. It is black and white. Okay single channel image now what i'm gonna do is now we're gonna use our thresholding methods so let's uh, image 2 is equals to now to use a thresholding method we uh, use this cv2 dot threshold and uh, threshold requires these arguments first is a source image then i'm gonna give image 1 then it says thresh means threshold value so basically what threshold value uh, thresholding is like there is some kind of a value at which uh, before which something else is ha gonna happen and after that threshold value something else is gonna happen. So that is a, like a threshold point of 
point that divides the two pixels or that divides uh, the pixels between each other. So same thing is I'm gonna give some pixel or uh, as you know our pixel slice between 0 to 255. So I'm gonna give it something like uh, in between like uh, 140 let's say. Okay. Then I'm gonna give it a maximum value. It's asking for the what is the maximum value. So I will give it 255. Then the type. Which type of thresholding I wanna apply? I've showed you there are lots of types. Uh, I've shown you like two, five types of thresholding. So here we're gonna use one of them. CV2 dot thresh binary. You see here these are all the lots of types of binary or uh, thresholdings. So we're gonna use thresh binary, and this is it. Now what we're gonna do? We're gonna show the image. CV2 dot um, show. And as this is binary image, so I'm gonna write binary over here. Comma image two. Sorry two. Okay. So it looks all good. So let's run this. Okay, there's some kind of an error over here. Wait a minute. Okay. As you know, uh, uh, program just got interrupted in between, so my wait can destroy all windows is not working. That's why I now again have to restart my kernel. Okay, so basically we are missing one thing around over here. Now this so uh, you know this threshold method takes or uh, gives out two outputs. So it doesn't uh, just gives one output; it gives two outputs. So one output is the you know the image that we are just gonna form later on, and the second output is the threshold value that we are using. So this threshold method gives two outputs, red comma image two. In red uh, gets the uh, whatever the threshold value we are using, and the image two gets whatever the image later on is being formed. So now if I run it, it has to work perfectly fine this time. And as you can see here, yeah, both the images are here. Oh God. Yeah. So. You see here, what I did uh, uh, over here in the program, if you see, I said oh, oh, 140 is my threshold up to 255. So basically you see uh, what it did is, whatever the value is below 140, it gives, make it all zero. And whatever the value is above 140, it made it 255, the final large value, largest value that we have here, max value. So if you see, whatever the dark portion over here is in this image, is all converted to black, zero pixel. And whatever the light portion in this image is like this section, this section, this section, it's all converted into white. So it helps us in uh, finding out the darker regions or the lighter regions inside of the image directly by using this. And uh, also, uh, you know, if I just, uh, right now if I change the value, to like let's say 100 and change this also let's say I want to put it to 5 okay my max value is right now 225 it's a big deal now if you see this image okay now it break down the image at the 100 pixel uh, what do you say uh, yes at 100 pixel whatever the uh, value is uh, below 100 it will make it all to 0 and whatever the value is above 100 it will make it all to 255 this white you know all of this section becomes 255 so this is binary now if we uh, try some other no eight one oh one thing basically uh, this is not a white basically it does not convert into 255 it actually converted into 225 pixels this is not perfect white Okay, that's why it is converted into 225. And you can see here in the image or two also, if we see, check this RFC, you can see here it has converted all of them that is above the our threshold 100. It all converted to 225. And whatever is below threshold, if you get uh, somewhere to see, whatever is below uh, 100, it all becomes zero. You see, this is the sections. So, 
Um, with this, you can see, understand clearly what is happening over here. Okay, whatever is below uh, 100 becomes 0, and whatever is above 100 becomes 225. Now, this was one way of thresholding of finding, uh, you know, differentiating between them. Now, there's another method. Let me just copy it. Control C and Control V. Okay. Now, another method is binary inverse. Okay. Now, we're going to use the same values or we'll just going to put it to the No, let's see, put the same values and I'll make it image 3. And I'm gonna create one more cpg dot um, show. This will be binary inverse and string. Okay. So all of it done. Now if I run this much, now the exact opposite of it has happened. Now with the word you would have understood, we are using binary inverse, so that means opposite is going to happen. Now, you see, whatever the portion in this binary image is white, it all becomes black. And whatever the portion is black, is all become white over here. Now, you see, this uh, strip around here is black in this binary one. And in the inverse binary, this strip becomes white. Same thing is for the, this section. All of this, that's why it is binary inverse. Like, uh, suppose I want to grab the face. You see, this all black faces become black and this the face is white. And eyes are just differentiated in the black, they are darker, the hairs are darker, that's why they are black. Same thing, just opposite, like we are fetching the background or something. So, this is binary inverse, one way. Okay, so, and you can see here, the value of the red that I told you, it accepts the value of the threshold. Whatever the threshold you are providing, it puts, saves that value inside of a red variable. That's why it requires two variables, and that's why we face the error that time. So now we will try another methods. Now at this time I'm gonna just wait a minute. I'm gonna write down all the methods. Okay, and then we're gonna see them uh, that together. Okay. So another method is let's make it a mage four, this is mage five, and this is mage six. Then there is thresh drop method. Then there is trash to zero, and then there is trash to zero and boss. Okay, so these are all the methods. This I'm gonna write a CD dot I am show. This one is strong and an H4. And uh, this time to zero. Image five. See video dot am show. And this time to zero and boss. And image six. Okay. So we've done it. We have done it on the same. Okay, let's saw you know the picture was not that clear and understand I'm gonna change it back to 140 okay it will help us you know work better with the images now if I run this whole set of code oh we got a lot of pictures over here now first I'm gonna find the original one where is not the original this is the original we have already discussed binary and binary inverse I'm gonna remove the binary from here and uh, binary inverse from here now we've got this original and there this is the trunk now you see they look almost similar but with the trunk there is one concept in trunk like whatever the value is so wait a minute let me put them down minimizing them okay so whatever the threshold we are providing like right now we are providing a threshold of 140 so what it does whatever the pixels values that are below 140 they will remain um, whatever they are they will not change but whatever the values above 140 
they will convert to 140. Like uh, it's if some place the value is like uh, uh, let's say if you see this in the original image, you see this is a vital lot vital section. It it must have a value around 200 something. But if you see in this image, it converted to a gray, that 140 pixel. So all of this section, whatever that is above 140 becomes 140, and whatever is below 140 that remains constant. So everything that is here white earth that all becomes 140. So if I just change the value over here, okay, I will show that thing later on. Just you know, just understand this concept. Whatever the value is uh, like uh, above 140 will remain one will remain 140 will convert to 140 and whatever value is below 140 that will uh, remain whatever they are. So this is the trunk concept. Now I'm gonna remove this trunk image and I'm gonna show another one that is 20. Now what this 20 in this concept? Oh, okay. Oh, I just press the wrong button. Yeah. So this is our original image, and this is our two zero image. Now two zero is almost similar to trunk. Now a little bit different, not similar. I would call it. But what happens in this? Whatever the value or whatever the threshold value we have given, below it, it converts it into a zero, and whatever is above it. Oh, uh, again, again I press some key. Oh, let me run it again. Shape. Yeah. Now this is our original image, and this is our two zero image. So in two zero, what happens is, uh, uh, whatever the value is, whatever the threshold we have provided, below that threshold, everything becomes zero, and above the threshold, it doesn't change. So like I have provided a threshold of one forty. So whatever is below one forty, like these darker sections over here, these hairs. And this uh, background over here, this strip, all this becomes zero. And uh, whatever is above uh, 140, that all remains same the way they are. So this is all same. But if you see there's a the shadow on the nose, the eyes section that is darker, and that's why it all became dark. And uh, you couldn't understand the image properly. But basically, uh, whatever the pixels is above 140, they are. Are all same. Now, if you see here in this section, there's a little bit of a shadow coming. That's why it is a lot darker, and that's why it's showing a little bit of a blackish, you know, sprinkles around there. So this is two zero, and and when we talk about two zero inverse, here it is. Yes, this is. Now this is our two zero inverse over here. Now, by the word you would have understood, two uh, two zero inverse will be just opposite of two zero. So it says whatever the value is below, uh, whatever the value is above threshold will become zero, and whatever the value is below threshold will remain same, the way they are. So same thing applied over here. Now whatever the value is above threshold becomes zero. Like you see this white section, this white strips over here. They all become zero, converted to zero. This glowing face, just you could say, just opposite of this image is the two zero inverse. So this is all the thresholding when we are talking about the black and white image. But I told you I will show you also with a colored image. So if I remove all of these and uh, I just put a comment section over here. So basically, what happening is now I'm using the original image. And now if I do it, you see, oh, they are like. Uh, Colorful images, and as earlier, trunk was looking almost similar to original. Same here, trunk is looking almost similar to original. So in this also, same thing is happening. And though this threshold 140 is working on the all of the pixels, okay, on all of the three scales. Now, if there's a comes now this these colored images are the combination of VGR. Now suppose now uh, you've seen these images, okay? Uh, I'm just moving it right now. Now suppose at some pixel I have a like a VGR combination of like 100, uh, 200, 150 and I am using a threshold binary. So what it is going to do with that pixel is, it is going to convert the threshold binary into, okay, wait a minute. 
it's gonna convert this threshold binary into like a I'm using 100 it is it will become 0 from a, now 200 is above 140 so it will become 225 at 225 is the highest one and uh, third one is also above 140 so it will become 225 so this color combination it will convert it into a, this color combination which is like a not useful much to us because we have it all changes the color, whatever the color we are doing, it is just changing the color of that image. So that's why we don't use it in a colorful image. Now let me remove it and show you. Now see, this is our image, this, this is our image. And you uh, match it with a 2, 0 and 1. Now what, what you are getting from this? You are hardly getting anything. Because all of the colors are getting changed, like these strips somewhere getting blue. Here is getting at this color and body is also getting bluish and blackish. There's no means like you can't uh, uh, find or characterize or get features out of this image. Same way if you talk about this with a binary. Now this is what I was talking about the binary image. Now this is what is happening. It becomes mostly it becomes a red color because. Yeah, the more all of these lighter sections, these are, you know, all this orangeish or yellowish lighter section are because of the red color. And uh, as you see, this these are all high in the pixels. That's why it is all converting into a red because red is become max to 55, 225, I would say. And that's why it is uh, becoming this image is becoming like this, looking like this. Now this section has a highest blue color rate, so it is giving a high blue because blue this time blue is max. So we basically don't get much of the features from the color images. Now in some cases, like uh, hardly few, in few cases, we also apply this feature, colored feature also. We, we use this method also to get characteristics in some images. But basically we use it with the black and white images because there is only one scale, light or dark. So that helps us differentiate images between two features. Now here we have got a lots of like there are lots of colors to differentiate with. That's that becomes harder. But when we talk about light to dark, there is only one color stream. Either it is a light or it is a dark one. There is nothing in between. So that becomes easy to differentiate with and to work with. That's why I would prefer using uh, colored images. But so choice if you can or uh, if you find yourself comfortable using with a uh, colored images, so choice you can work with them. Okay, so this is all about thresholding images, thresholding of images, and this is a general thresholding basically. And the next video I'm gonna tell you about uh, adaptive thresholding in which all the thresholding, uh, all the you know this like right now we have given at a limit of 140, but in adaptive thresholding that uh, limit will change according to pixels. So I will show you in this next video. Keep watching our channel. This is, if you haven't subscribed the channel, subscribe the channel to get the uh, updates on the latest video. Thank you. Have a good luck.